Good morning, paddlers around the world. Hey, this is Gary again. Kakrap is back with another video from the California Center for Research on Advanced Paddling. I know it's been a while, but Kakrap has been really busy. Uh, a lot of Kakrap going on here in Los Angeles, and uh, in addition to the local politics, uh, well, that's Kakrap. I'm involved in Kakrap, and this is a series now of videos short videos looking at aspects, all aspects of feathered and unfeathered paddling, and I'm calling this claims and questions. So I'm going to make a series of claims about feathered and unfeathered paddling, and I am then going to show why I believe those claims with explanations and demonstrations here on the water in beautiful Marina Del Rey uh, in Los Angeles. And then I'm going to pose some questions about each claim and hopefully get some answers from you out there that can improve my knowledge of what's going on here and help other people out as well. Okay, let's get right to it. Claim number one. If you are experiencing any pain or discomfort paddling with a feathered paddle and that pain is on your control hand side, for me, my control hand now is my right hand. That's why I have the glove here. You'll always know that's control. This is my release. If you have pain or discomfort on the control hand side, you do not have to go to zero feather to address that and hopefully reduce it and eliminate it, okay? So that's the first claim I am going to make. So first I have to tell you what feather paddling is. I think everybody knows I am feathered here. And I am feathered quite a bit. I'm feathered 90 degrees. That's the most you'd ever want to be feathered. I have, so the two blades are offset by 90 degrees. I can adjust that at 90. Uh, I have a control hand, my gloved hand, right hand. I have my knuckles here roughly lined up with the top of my wing blade. And that means that whenever I bring this down with my wrist in a neutral position, and we'll talk about that too, that's neutral, it's going to be square, okay? And this control hand stays in control always during normal paddling feather, okay? So it stays with that orientation, okay? It's always doing that. Now the release hand, obviously, has to let the paddle shaft rotate to square the release hand blade. How does the release hand blade get squared from the water? because they're off 90 degrees here. Well, one thing that does is, is just raising my top hand and putting an angle to my paddling, right? That angle could be zero degrees, although you really can't paddle that way. 45 would be sort of like that. 90, which you really can't paddle, would be like that. But you can see as I bring this up to about eye level where I normally paddle, but my shoulder, but about eye level, it is starting to square that blade but it is not enough at 90 degrees, right? So what do I have to do to completely square the release hand blade in addition to raising my top control hand here, I need to extend the wrist. I need to add a little bit more twist to get it square, okay, at 90 degrees. So that's what that looks like. And I will mention then, so this would be a, a neutral wrist this is extended with the knuckles coming back toward the forearm. This is flexed. So this is extension, this is flexion. This is an extended wrist, flex wrist. This I'm calling neutral or balanced, okay? And the default I think should be a neutral wrist. And I would like to keep my control hand wrist neutral at the pull, right? I also want it neutral at the top, which I can't do now because of the 90 degrees. It's just too too much of a feather for that. So why would anybody paddle this way? Well, if you look at my top returning blade, I think you will see why. What's going on? It's just slicing through. 90 degrees means that when the bottom is square, the top one is 90 degrees to that, so it has the less frontal area. So that was the thought originally behind going to feathered paddles when they first did this for competitors was the idea that minimized the wind resistance, and it certainly does. But those were bigger paddles, 
flatter paddles, they had more wind resistance. Not as big a deal with the wing paddle, which I think is more aerodynamic, even flat on, although I still think feather angled makes a difference, but not as much. So that's why people would paddle 90. The other reason back then was that at 90 degrees, they had one piece paddles and they came with 90 degrees, right hand control or left hand control. That was it. Is that the paddle? You want a feather paddle, you were 90 degrees. And I think this is why Greg Barton, who was paddling back then, I guess was it in the 90s, uh, at the international level, a uh, sprint level, he started, he says he started with 90 degrees and has since gone down to 75. Uh, I believe he is, yeah, he is right hand control, okay? So that's why you have to do that. But today we have wing blades and we have adjustable two-part paddles so we don't have to be 90 degrees. So let's say that you are paddling at some angle and you are having to paddle with an extended wrist at the top of the control hand and you're having some pain. When I did that at 65, when I started, I got pain right here at the base of the thumb of my control hand, right hand. Uh, you may want to say, okay, I know I got to try zero because you're reading about, oh, I went to zero degrees and my pain disappeared. And I made that comment too, because that's what I did. I realized later I didn't have to go to zero and zero could actually cause some other types of problems depending upon your preference. But let's look at zero. Okay, now this is sort of the array. Oscar Chapolsky has put zero feather paddling on wing blades on the map. And it's really interesting to consider what that allows us to do. But one of the things it does is since the blades are already aligned, as I raise my hand, I'm unsquaring the release hand blade. All right, so now that top edge is coming too close to me. If I paddle that way, it's just going to uh, slip out. Oh boy, I can have a high stroke rate maybe that way. I ain't gonna go anywhere. I'm not gonna move much water behind me, right? So I am going to have to correct, I have to flex somewhat my top hand to be able to paddle with one hand control, the same as I was before with zero angle. Now, when I did that and I went from 65 to zero, my pain disappeared. My top hand does not like being extended at the top, uh, but it doesn't mind being flexed. So I was happy to do that. And I had to, and I was using, continuing to use right hand control when I went to zero, okay? And that's what I'm doing right now. And I have to flex my top wrist. But then I realized, hey, what if I bring it back and find some intermediate feather between zero and 90, right? Uh, so I found that if I go to about 45, okay, 15, 30, 45, no, that's 90. Okay, those, those are in 30 degrees. So it's gonna be something like this, maybe more like 40. Now you can see I'm still feathered, but much less than 90, more than zero. And if I do this, now my top wrist can stay neutral all of the time at this paddling angle. If I change my paddling angle, it will change a little bit what I have to do with my control hand wrist. Again, the release hand wrist just does whatever it wants. It's, it's completely free to choose its orientation. If you're getting pain or discomfort in your release hand side, I don't know what's going on, okay? This is not applicable to you. Okay, so that's the lesson there. If you are, and that's my claim, having problems, you do not have to go to zero feather, although there may be some advantages depending on how you paddle and where you paddle with zero feather. We will talk about that later. You can just reduce your feather angle. There is some feather angle, I will guarantee, that will allow you to keep your control hand always neutral at a certain paddling angle. Okay, with that particular boat that you have, the height of your seat, all of these things can influence it. So you just have to figure that out. I'd recommend maybe trying high about half of your current feather and see what that does. So if you've been paddling at 70, try 35 and see what that does and see what it does to your wrist. You can sort of look at your wrist and see, are you flexing at the top? Uh, so find that. I will guarantee that there is something greater than zero, less than 90, 
which should allow you to do whatever you want with your control hand wrist, okay? So, that's the claim. Hi there. How's it going? Oh, pretty good. So now, what are the questions I have? The main question is, well, one question. Question one, why do people think you have to go to zero feather to address problems with your control side discomfort or pain, okay? Why is that? I am not sure why. It, could it be that people don't understand the relationship between paddling angle and feather angle and top hand wrist orientation of the control hand? Could be, I'm not sure. Uh, so I know Oscar went right to zero and never tried going to, uh, he gradually reduced his feather actually. We should ask him about that. Why did he keep going to zero? Because he was reducing it like five degrees every month or something like that. He should have been able to find comfort. Well, he was a downwind paddler too. We'll talk about that. But that's one question. So let me know about that. Second question has to do with, uh, since I'm dropping names here, I mentioned that uh, uh, Greg Barton is at 75 now with right hand control. I know Ivan Lawler uh, says 75 degrees for him until he dies and he uses left hand control. Why are these paddlers using still a fairly high paddle angle? If I paddle at 75 in this boat, uh, my wrist would not be happy, at least the base of my thumb. Would not like that at all because I would just have to extend much too much, okay? So why are they? Could it be that either their setup, now Ivan is using mostly K1 as a higher seat, it's narrower, and it could be that he actually has a, a neutral wrist at 75 degrees, and that would explain it, okay? Uh, and Greg, ah, Greg Barton, I don't know why, because he's paddling, I think, mostly surf ski. I see him on Strava, and even a V12 or V, uh, what do they have, 14, I think he paddles mostly a V12, uh, is not as narrow as a K1, and typically the seats are lower. Uh, I don't imagine he has a neutral wrist at 75, but maybe he does. Or a third question would be, maybe there is some advantage uh, to paddling with the top hand control wrist slightly, somewhat extended. I can't imagine what that would be, but maybe, maybe they're just used to it, doesn't cause them any problems. Uh, and they are getting a tiny bit more reduction in air resistance, so that might make sense, okay? So those are the questions I have about feathered paddling. Uh, and just as a, as a note about that, I was interested to see an ad, I think it was for Yontex Paddles, featuring uh, Balint Kopas, the Hungarian sprinter who has uh, Olympic gold medals and uh, world championship gold medals uh, that he's won. And he says he paddles at 56 degrees. And he is paddling K1, narrow boat, high top arm, uh, probably a high seat for power. Uh, and he's using 56. And that's quite a bit, so that's almost 20 degrees difference between that and what Ivan and Greg are paddling. I've been mostly K1, I believe, and Greg Sirsky. So uh, that's kind of interesting. So there, there are some questions there. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you uh, have problems with your control hand, side, pain, discomfort, try reducing your feather and see uh, how you can take care of that without having to change your technique. Now, as a little bit of a preview to unfeathered or zero feather paddling, it is possible to paddle zero with completely neutral wrists all the time, okay? But you can't do it with continuous control, okay? You have to sort of juggle the blade back and forth, but uh, that's not one of the questions I have now about feathered paddling. Just to uh, avoid any questions about that, we will look at zero feather paddling and how you can achieve that. So there you go. Uh, let me know what you think. And uh, as we settle down and come up with some discussion and perhaps answers to my questions, I'll come up with the next video with the next claim. And claim number two will be 
that feathered paddling is the only way to have neutral wrists all the time while maintaining one hand control, at least one hand control all the time on your paddle. But that's not a question for now, just sort of a, a bit of a preview of what will be coming up later on. Okay, so that's it for now. Uh, signing off from beautiful Marina Del Rey in Los Angeles with another crap handling video from the California Center for Research on Advanced Paddles.